Ahoy and welcome to a journey through the annals of history. Today we sail through the captivating world of pirates as we celebrate the arrival of pirate flags in War Thunder. But before we unfurl these banners, let's embark on a voyage back in time to uncover the reasons behind the world's enduring fascination with pirates. Pirates have fascinated and captivated people's imagination since the earliest days of history. They have been portrayed in various forms of media and culture such as books, movies, games, songs and art. They have been depicted as heroes and villains, as romantic or realistic figures, as symbols of freedom or anarchy. They have inspired admiration, fear, respect and contempt amongst different audiences for generations. They represent a paradoxical and contradictory phenomenon that challenges our conventional notions of morality perhaps appealing to the adventurous spirit that resides inside all human beings. The word piracy in the traditional sense conjures images of marauders on the waves, robbing and pillaging ships. It can be applied to a wide range of nautical misbehaviour, including coastal raiding and interception of ships on the high seas. Robbery, kidnapping and murder all qualify as piratical activities, provided there's some water and a boat involved. In today's media, piracy symbolises defiance, freedom from societal norms and the relentless pursuit of treasure on a boundless ocean. The fictional pirate's life is one unburdened by the conventions of the land whose path is subject only to the wind. Yet the origins of piracy are deeply rooted in antiquity, stretching back to the 12th century BC, when the enigmatic sea peoples wreaked havoc on the Mediterranean. The origin and identity of the Sea People is still unknown, as the only sources that mention them are mainly Egyptian inscriptions that describe their battles. The Egyptians called them by different names such as the Sherden, the Sheklesh, the Luka, the Tersha and the Akawasha, but it is not clear if these names refer to specific ethnic groups or regions. These seafaring warriors launched relentless attacks on established empires, leaving destruction in their wake. They were known for their advanced naval tactics and formidable weapons. Some suggest they were migrants, driven by climate change or political instability to seek new lands. Others propose they were a confederation of different ethnic groups, united by a thirst for conquest. The Sea Peoples played a role in the collapse of several Bronze Age civilizations, including the Hittite Empire, the Mycenaean Civilization and the Ugarit Kingdom. Their invasions are considered one of the contributing factors to the late Bronze Age collapse, which was a significant period of societal upheaval and the end of numerous ancient cultures. The last and most devastating attack by the Sea Peoples occurred during the reign of Ramesses III, who faced two waves of invasion in 1180 and 1178 BCE. They attacked by land and by sea, destroying many cities and kingdoms along their way. Ramesses III fought them in several battles in Palestine and Egypt and claimed to have defeated them decisively. He recorded his victories on the walls of his mortuary temple at Medinet Habu, where he depicted scenes of naval and land battles with the Sea People. After their appearance in the late Bronze Age, the Sea Peoples gradually disappeared from historical record. It is unclear whether they were assimilated into other cultures or their confederation disintegrated. It is believed that some Sea Peoples managed to settle in various regions after their raids. The most famous example is the Peleset or the Philistines, who established themselves in five city-states along the coast of Palestine, becoming the main adversaries of the Israelites in later times. After this point in time, coastal cities and communities grew to fear the sight of unknown ships on the horizon. One would look for signs, banners, flags, anything to indicate whether one was dealing with friendly traders or a band of murderous bootstrappers. Piracy continued throughout the ages, reaching its peak in the 17th and 18th centuries, when pirates operated in various parts of the world such as the Caribbean, the Indian Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean and the South China Sea. Pirates were often seen as outlaws and enemies of all nations who defied the laws and authorities of the land. They lived by their own rules and codes of conduct which varied from crew to crew. Some pirates were cruel and ruthless, while others were honourable and more generous. Some pirates were motivated by greed and adventure, while others were driven by political or religious ideals. Some pirates were former sailors or merchants, while others were escaped slaves or rebels. Pirates were a diverse and heterogeneous group of people who came from different backgrounds, cultures and regions. Even Julius Caesar himself was abducted by pirates at the age of 25 while sailing in the Aegean. He learned that they planned to ransom him for 20 talents worth of silver, and he laughed in their faces. 
You said you just wanted money. You said this was just business. Is this business? They didn't know who they'd captured, and he demanded that they ask for 50 talents, which was 1,500 kilos worth of silver, to which they happily agreed. His captors allowed him a fair amount of freedom aboard their island and ships, sharing games and exercises together. Despite this, young Caesar openly vowed to crucify each one of them once he was free. The pirates didn't take him seriously, much to their detriment, and on his return to Rome, he promptly raised a fleet and made good on his word, also taking back the silver. One of the most easily recognizable features of a pirate ship is the flag, known as the Jolly Roger or the Black Banner. The Jolly Roger was a black flag with a white skull and crossbones, sometimes accompanied by other symbols such as an hourglass, a sword, a heart, or a motto. The Jolly Roger was used to intimidate and terrorize enemies, as well as to communicate intention. Prior to the advent of the Jolly Roger as we know today, pirates flew a simple black flag, initially devoid of design. The black flag was part of a flag signal combo, together with a plain red flag. After closing in on a target ship, the black flag would be raised, signaling that quarter will be given if the crew surrenders their cargo without a fight. If the enemy did not strike their own flag to signal surrender, the red flag, or the blood flag as it was known, was raised, signaling that the target's cargo will be taken by force and that no quarter will be given. This was followed by warning shots, and soon after, the action would commence. Not all pirates were alike. Some pirates were actually privateers, who were authorized by government to attack ships during wartime. Privateers were considered legal combatants who acted on behalf of a nation, while pirates were considered illegal criminals who acted on behalf of themselves. Privateers had to follow certain rules and regulations, such as obtaining a letter of mark from their government, sharing their spoils with their sponsors, and respecting the rights of neutral parties. Pirates have no such obligations or restrictions. However, the distinction between pirates and privateers was often blurred and ambiguous. Many privateers turned to piracy when their commissions ended or when they found more lucrative opportunities elsewhere. Many pirates claimed to be privateers when they were captured or tried by authorities. Many governments tolerated or even encouraged piracy when it suited their interest or agenda. Piracy was seen as a form of high treason, and various extreme punishments were often laid down in an effort to deter others from such a life. The Murder Act of 1751 stated, In no case whatsoever shall the body of any murderer be suffered to be buried. And so they were hung in chains or gibbets near harbours or on the coast below the high tide mark as a grisly warning to others. In other cases, pirates were beheaded and quartered, and their body parts were displayed in various public places. Piracy exists into the modern age and still poses a problem to governments and corporations alike. The symbol of the Jolly Roger remains as an enduring legacy and has left its mark on modern culture. This sinister image has inspired countless portrayals of piracy in movies, books and even video games, with most people instantly recognizing what such a banner means, even if they don't know why. Despite the terrible crimes committed on the high seas, why are pirates so popular? Perhaps it's the allure of a life free from society's rules, or the bravery and cunning that exhibited by these seafaring outlaws. From the ancient pictures showing the sea people's fury, to the black flag and its dire connotations, the skull and crossbones and its fearsome visage has allowed these swashbuckling renegades to make a black spot on history, and at the same time, plunder our arts. I've asked our mateys, don't you be going anywhere before you hit that there like button. Or I'll be sending the black spot your way.